Hello there, welcome to Target Radio Podcasts. Yes, we have a podcast for your ears. Every week here on the show, on our live shows that is, we try and get an interesting uh, person, persons, uh, artists, band members, music, poets, film playwrights. Uh, We even get, uh, well, we try and get everyone. We try and get everyone that's interested in our genre of music that we portray here on Target Radio. So what we do is sit them down, we have a telephone interview, sometimes a live interview and we discuss all things in their profession so stay tuned here uh this one is an absolute blast you're gonna love this and uh, i'll be back at the end of the uh you know tell you what's coming up in the very near future so it is i am the pod father um i will now tell you that this is target radio podcast don't forget to check us out on itunes and if you think we deserve it don't forget to leave us a five star rating that would be rather nice thank you very much indeed so over to uh me cookie and obviously to andy top walker as well and sit in sit tight and enjoy this is target radio dear god in heaven please let this show go okay with no major boobs or goofs or is it goofs Please don't let me tread all over the intros of records or oh, say a naughty word. I listen to Sean Cook. Oh, Sean Cook. We'd like to say that, in our opinion, it is not suitable for children or for those of you who may have a nervous disposition. Sean Hello there, welcome to Target Radio. It's me, it's Cookie, and alongside Andy Top Walker, we bring you every single week uh, brilliant guests. And uh, this next one is a pre record. We recorded this on Thursday, the 16th of April, and uh, we spoke with a gentleman by the name of Tiber Cranston. And uh, for those that don't know who uh, Tiber is, he's the front man of a brilliant uh, ska and reggae music um, band called The Jewelers. Now, the lead singer and founding member, Tiber, has a love for ska and reggae music, developed from a very early age, in fact. Um, talk, spoke about his uh, father, Bill, who was a local promoter of Jamaican music in the 1960s, and also worked on a fruit and veg uh, stall back in the day, so he really had a voice. Um, you'll find out in the interview uh, a little bit about uh, Tiber, his uh, music passions, and of course, uh, his music inspirations. He goes on to uh, talk about Frank Sinatra, Bobby Darin, of course, Bob Marley. We even talk about a little bit about sort of modern reggae and things like that as well. Now, obviously, um, during this uh, interview, we did uh, touch on the coronavirus, uh, etc., and he is a very passionate person when it comes to cheering for the NHS. He's got his own views and idealistic. He's a really, really fascinating uh, person. I urge you to actually go and see him once, obviously, all of our bands are lifted live, okay? Um, He's actually got, uh, we spoke about this as well, their very first arena tour in um, London, Wembley, which is due uh, due to be on uh, the 28th of November. Hopefully, with the restrictions uh, in place at the moment, they'll be lifted and everything will go back, you know, uh, normally. Now, obviously, there was other bits and pieces as well we spoke about. And we spoke about Wayfest uh, on the 21st of August. Again, hopefully, that will go ahead. And we also uh, spoke about Georgia and the Antique Youth, who we've had on our show before, even though it was only a very short interview because we kept losing Georgia, unfortunately. And uh, he said, I have heard of her. Yes, he had heard of her. And that will be great to see them both on the stage. Whether they'll be together or not, I don't know. But Tyber is looking forward to um, you know meeting up with Georgia and the Antique Youth and uh, watching her play as well so fingers crossed for indeed the Wayfest on the 21st of August now there's not much more I can say at this point um, sit back and enjoy the interview with Tiber because he like I said he's a really nice passionate fella um, from South East London and we spoke about that as well uh, what didn't we speak about well tune in you'll find out more about this and obviously about his music his desires and going forward what he wants to happen next thank you very much indeed and of course my thanks 
thanks to Andy Topwalker as well for setting this one up. And uh, he doesn't appear on it, but a lot of his questions do. So here we go, without no further ado, into Tiber and obviously his interview. Brilliant stuff. Thank you. Hello. Hello there. Would that be Tiber? Hello, Tyber. How are you? It's Sean here from uh, Ch- uh, Target Radio. How are you? Oh, good. Yeah, I'm good. I'm, 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 talking, I'm right in the middle of a move. So, yes, I'm good. <laughs> I'm very good. Not in being rude. I've literally moved house about two weeks ago. Oh, I'm, my I'm, goodness I'm right. me. I've got so many things to do. But they said it's a 15-minute interview, so I'll, I'm, I was just trying to phone to the person. But I'll call, you, I'll call them back. Right. On the telephone right now, we've got a brilliant, a brilliant young man. I'm going to say young man because, obviously, you're a lot younger than myself there, Tyber. And uh, well, just well, introduce... Well, young, no. <laughs> <laughs> introduce yourself, if you wouldn't mind, please, sir. Well, like jewelers welcome one and all it's fantastic to have you here tyber and uh, i know your time is limited you've been very very busy with a move and everything uh, the jewelers are a nine piece unless obviously i'm incorrect scar and reggae band from south east london i was trying to i was going to do a south east london accent there but i won't no. um <laughs> and apparently you first hit the south you're right south east london south east yeah. london yeah. <laughs> sorry people, a lot of people say south south, south is it's not really small south south yeah yeah, yeah. South East London. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what part yeah, of South East yeah. were you from? No, I'm originally my mum and dad. My dad's from Penge area. I moved out from there. We went to uh, um, Crystal Palace, and then sort of Greenwich, a bit of Brixton. Then I sort of moved out further and further and further. But my family live in sort of Beckenham, Bromley, Penge area. Uh, he first hit the headlines when a single kiss on the, the lips stormed. I love the words. Stormed into the UK top thirty despite having yeah. no industry backing. Now, how how did you do that first and foremost, please? I don't really know. I think it was a lot of hard work, perseverance, belief in ourselves, and knowing that you know we're two brothers doing it together and. I guess we just kind of, my brother kind of wrote the song, um, and then I kind of sort of got into more of the business side of it and started bringing in more people. Um, so, um, but yeah, it, it, it's been an absolute, it, 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 my kind of, I think between us, we kind of created the perfect partnership. So, uh, obviously with your brother Simon, what's well, given a little name check there, uh, did you start street entertaining with your brother? Uh, yes, I did. He was the first one. He started busking. We moved to Canterbury. He was busking in Canterbury for like, uh, I don't know, a year or so. And about £14 pounds in a bucket with a friend of his. And then he just came and got his little brother. And I was like, oh. Oh, fantastic. Time, I was like 16. I was like, I was into I had the street cred and one mate hanging around down the town. All of a sudden, they see me jumping about on the high street singing with a bucket. It wasn't very, there wasn't a lot of street cred attached to that. So it was quite a difficult job to sort of try and style that out to my friends. But I think as soon as I started singing, I was earning a little bit of money and that, you know, a bit worse stopping. But it was embarrassing at first because it's not like you're singing something like it's grime or hip hop or something that's very street. It was kind of yeah. old soul and rep. So it's sort of like, but, you know, once you grow out of that and realise that, you know, this is kind of part of my heritage. My mom and dad brought us up on the music. Yeah. Just kind of just get on with it. And you look at the bank balance, you kind of go, well, I'm earning more than my friend who's working in Debenhams. Right. So a few of these questions I'm going to ask you, um, sort of rapid fire, because obviously we're limited on time today, which is unfortunate sure. because you sound ever go. so interesting. Now, Andy Walker, who obviously um, helped and mostly importantly um, created this opportunity to speak to your good self today, Tyber. So I'm just going to ask a few of you, um, who's inspired you to make music? It's a good question. It's one that sort of, it never really changes. I suppose Bob Marley, Sam Cooke, Dean Martin, oh. Otis Redding, um, Peter Tosh, Bobby Darin. Oh. I mean, you know, to me, there's everyone that I'm talking about are, are singers, uh, from Sam and Dave to um, Toots and the Maytels to, it was all music I was brought up on. Yeah. I was very, very fortunate. My mum and dad knew their stuff. And, you know, if you couldn't sing, you yeah. know, it wasn't played in my house. It was never, there was never catchy, just poppy tunes that were just gotcha. all the yeah. time. It was all basic time. You know, they lived in an era of the 60s. Yes. You know, growing up 60s and 70s yeah. where, they, you know, they didn't have special effects. It was like, can you sing? Can you dance? And it's now, and, and so you brought up on those people and all we wanted to do was to sound like them. So I spent a good portion of my life in, in you know, um, imitating Otis Redding, Toots and Motels. And after about 10 years, my brother, me and my brother were like, Actually, we do need to kind of get our own voices together now. Because of course, we're trying to be impersonation, impersonating these people. So, eventually, I think our voices came out. So there's a little bit of 
you know, I like to, when I hear my voice now, and I've, I've actually started only listening to it, appreciate it the last sort of couple of years, so I'm going to have to, because if I'm going to be recording stuff and need to hear it back, I'm going to need to at least appreciate my voice to some degree. But uh, Yeah, of course, so yeah. I, I can sort of listen to it, and I can, I sort of hear a little bit of everyone. I guess from standing on a high street, if you're singing a John Holt song, like I'd Love You To Want Me or um, Help Me Make It Through The Night, we were standing on the high street trying to sound like John Holt because that's yeah. what people are going to give you money for. If you went up and sang a, a John Holt reggae song, mm. um, uh, then and, and you didn't sound like him, people aren't going to give you money. I mean, it's, you know, it's as simple as that. If of course, yeah. If you singing a Bob Marley song, Three Little Birds, and give you more money if you sound like Bob. But after a while, 10 years of that, once you start getting and sounding a little bit like Bob, you think, mm, I don't want to sound like Bob. I want to find out who I am. Of so course, I yeah. We're, our, our voices are a combination of all the people that inspired us since we were kids. So, you know, which I guess is, is kind of where we're at right now. I, sort of, I, know, I know my voice, but because I've been spent such a long time impersonating people yeah. um, and tr trying to get attention, I'm, I'm sort of... I suppose I can sort of adapt to many, many, many things. So, yeah, absolutely, indeed. Um, so, who would you like? I mean, obviously, they can be dead or alive. And um, who would you like to most collaborate with? Yeah, I'm so precious about music. I'm so I, I just I love, love, love music. Yeah, I'm bound to miss out several people that I'm going to come off the phone and think, oh, why don't you say that? Why don't you say that? Yes, I mean, Bob Marley has to be up there. Absolutely, has to be one of the greatest singers, songwriter, performers that. You know that I've ever, I've never seen him live, but I've ever witnessed and, and seen on TV videos. Yes. Um, Sam Cooke, without a shadow of a doubt, is one of the greatest voices of all time. Yeah. Dean Martin, one of the the, the greatest showman I have ever, ever known, and fantastic voice. And Absolutely. Six of the Maytels. Yeah. He's the only one out of three without those four actually that, that that's still alive. So even though I, we've supported him, I've never sung with him. It'd be an absolute dream for me to do that. Um, so that would be probably one of your uh, bands to open up with as well, you know, to open up for. Would it be Toots and the Main Tales or Bob Marley and the Wailers? Uh, yeah, we, we've played on the same stage and festivals with them, but absolutely, absolutely. Fantastic. Really, really. And going with venues then, because obviously I've noticed on uh, your bio here, and obviously this is all subject to change now, ladies and gentlemen, because obviously with the virus and everything, um, that you're looking possibility of having your first arena tour in 2020, fingers crossed and everything goes well, at Wembley on the 28th yeah. of November. Absolutely. So obviously that's still pending at the moment. Obviously, well, we're hoping it's still it is, just going to carry on. Going to be out of it. Yeah, I think it will do. I mean, I know. Right. Okay. Now the twenty-first of August. Again, subject to obviously uh, the coronavirus and everything. You may be sharing the stage with the feelings under the uh, piece pirate. Now here's one that you may or may not have heard of is Georgia and the Antique Youth. Have you heard of them? You know what? There is some. I have heard of them. No. no oh, I fantastic. Do I know any of their songs? But I, I do, I have heard of them. I've seen them either on social media or something, things crop up. And with a name like that as well, you're not really going to forget them. That's absolutely right. She is absolutely a diamond. Now, I know Andy and his lady wife, uh, Nikki, have gone to see uh, Georgia on a couple of occasions and watched her play live. Okay. Uh, I've seen videos. Yeah. I've obviously got a few of her songs as well. And they are absolutely brilliant. She's got a lovely voice. So, obviously, if everything sure. goes well, you'll be sharing a stage uh, with, obviously, uh, Georgia. And uh, you get a chance to meet her and look, yeah, watch her really music and stuff brilliant. like that. So... Just wanted to get her over. <laughs> now, um, obviously, earlier today, I was uh, talking with my good lady wife, who loves reggae. She loves Bob Marley. She loves UB40. Um, now, when yep. she heard your music, she goes, I've got a question I'd like to ask. So this is from Rachel, my wife. She goes, have you ever been compared to, and obviously, I don't know if this is a, a good thing or a bad thing, so I'm just going to go with it, with UB40? Yeah, we've been compared. I don't think we're anything like them. I mean, I get the fact that there's a skank. I get the fact that, you know, it's more happy, upbeat music. We don't really get caught up in a political kind of message about it all. But outside of that, I don't see the resemblance whatsoever. And in fact, I find it slightly insulting for them and to us because yeah. it's just like people just going, it's like saying someone that, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, you like, like, you like sort of indie rock music, Coldplay, a bit like U2. It's like Coldplay and U2 are nothing alike. Of course if not. If you like music enough, you should be able to do, you know, different, you can see a big difference between them. So. Yes. Of I course, don't see them, I don't see much of a resemblance to us. It's just it's people's lack of knowledge. It's kind of happy and upbeat, and it's got a skank to it. It's reggae. Oh, you must be like you before it. Oh, you're white as well, like Ali Campbell. Do you know what I mean? It's a little bit of a cliche. It makes me just think your music knowledge isn't very good. I totally get it. I mean, and I don't find it as an insult. I think you're amazing, and we know them, and we 
could get on well with them. We've been on stage many times before, and you know, my brother grew up was a big UB40 fan, and everything yeah. else. But you know, the resemblance isn't, is, is the, and, and the sound isn't, it's not the same. No, of course not. No, I mean, obviously, I, I pointed it out to my wife. I said, well, look, you know, uh, UB40 are sort of um, more of a pop source, and I don't disrespect for for UB40. Yeah, I like UB40. They've got, they've, they've got their niche. They've got, got their niche uh, sound. Yeah, as well. I yes, think you're it. a bit I mean, more. Not, I th- I'm going to be honest here. You've got that sort of like real better. I think you've got a larger range of music there. Just the three songs that I've listened to so far. When we try. We, we can we can mix it up. We'll do some ska, do some rock steady, play some some reggae, and we'll we'll, we'll be a little bit sort of like um, we'll, we'll do something a little bit experimental as well. That's not. You know, you would hear it and you go, I'm not sure that is the jewellers. But we said, so we did like UB40, they have a sound and we have a sound. You know, basically, you hear UB40 song, you can instantly, before Ali Campbell or whoever's singing the vocals comes in, you kind of go, This is UB40. Yes, yeah, yeah you, know, you sort of hear it, don't you? Good band. I can, when I hear Toots and the Maytels, the form Toots Hibbert comes in, I can hear the, the rhythm and go, That sounds like a Toots song. Bob Marley saying, But to me, all the great artists should have that before they even start singing. The band behind yeah. them, the vibe of it, the feel of it should give people an idea. And fans, yeah, and fans can instantly then recognise it straight away and think, Oh, great, sure. a great UB40 or a Bob Marley or indeed a Jewelers. Sure. You know, you're going to hear that sure. straight away. And I hear yeah. that with your music as well. I mean, I've only heard the three songs, and I'm going to be completely honest with you today, because obviously I only got them yesterday. Yeah. Um, and I, I said to my wife, there's a great range here though, but they sound absolutely yeah. so tight. It's lovely, it's a nice sounding to it. Yeah, and you, you, you know, your voice is absolutely spot on, it's brilliant. You know what? That's come largely from busking and standing next to yes. my brother, who's got a fantastic voice, was born with it, as my sister had as well. I mean, it's not me, you know, I think anyone will tell you that knows my family that they were kind of born with it. I had to work at it. Um, and when you're standing in between, I'm the middle child out of the three, yeah, when you're standing between your siblings and they've got you know what clearly a god's gift ability to be able to sing yeah that just pushed me to kind of go look i need to keep up here or i've got to get out the game so of course they kind yeah of pushed me a little bit without even trying they did i just i knew instantly they were far better than me but we all had loud voices because my dad was a market tradesman so he could shout out his when he's selling fruit and veg so we all had that oh but fantastic i just had that i had a lack of control where oh. they could really control their voices <laughs> when i used to sing out there was no control it was almost like a little bit of shouting but I, you could hear with a little bit of training that this voice could turn into something and I'm glad to say after a few years it has sort of turned into something that I'm proud of now Excellent. but it wasn't then OK, another silly <laughs> and that is a silly question but it, it could have yeah. a serious answer Do you sing in the shower? Any, I will croon in the shower sing, This is where my Bobby Darren, Dean Martin Frank Sinatra comes in uh, a little bit of Mel Torme uh, Perry Como I do all of those people in there because I just think it's all about breath control and yes. holding the notes and uh, and having a vibrato and all that, which, I don't know, in the shower with the steam and everything else, just feels like a perfect place to sort of warm up and to sort of push yourself singing like that. So, and you know, you're not the first person to actually say that with the steam and the helps of the uh, breathing and obviously the throat and, you know, limbering up and uh, getting everything sort sure. of uh, ready for a big night. So uh, is that how yeah, you sort yeah, of uh, warm like up that. literally in the shower? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, oh, I'll be singing is... Come Fly With Me probably in about an hour when I have a shower. Excellent, lovely. There we go. I bet your water bill's are sky high. <laughs> but... <laughs> Who cares? Who cares? Do exactly what you were saying. Yeah, yeah, you, you do. Nice shower at the right temperature, it goes hand in hand. Oh, fantastic. And obviously, uh, at the moment, we're in a sort of a, a, a weird place. Uh, obviously, just wrapping yeah. up the interview now, because I know you're a very busy man. Um, you're in a weird place at the moment, obviously, with this lockdown and obviously, you know, quarantine yeah. or whatever we want to call it. Have you got any sort of like positive yeah. messages for all of your fans that are missing you, missing your music, and obviously missing the jewelers? Uh, you know. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's already everything's already been said. It's just staying positive, knowing that you know that there is going to become a time when all this is going to be lifted. And why can't we just look at life a little bit differently? What have we learned from it? Well, to me, the classic thing to learn from it is to look around you and don't take the small things for granted. Don't take life for granted, and and put your your weapons down. If you're at loggerheads with someone, this is the time for us to realise. Just go look. Life can be taken from any of us at any time. Yeah. You know, I heard that Pep Guardiola is the man. City manager, his mum passed away, I think he was 82, and that was to the corona, and even the person like him that's got all the money in the world, I'm sure he'd give up everything he's got to bring his mum back, and it's like, we're all in the same boat, this is a virus that doesn't really care about whether you've got loads of money, whether you're really healthy or not, you know, we've all got to learn from this, what's happened, and come back stronger as humanity, not just about 
you know, oh, push, putting all your problems and all your issues aside. And, and, and mm. some people you won't have heard from. I mean, there's certain people I haven't heard from since it's all happened. But the good people are not going to hold it against you if you haven't contacted them. There's a couple of people who have moaned at me because I've been, I've moved and maybe I haven't been there as much as I'd like to have done. But, you know, and I think to myself, this is also a time for you to realize who the people are that really care about you as well. It's like you can see that, yeah. you know, the people that aren't going to jump on your case because you've not been phoning every two days to check in you know they're the people that uh that, that they're going to be there for you from thick and thin and, and i've had a lot of friends that uh that you know i have don't speak to maybe once a week or something but yeah you know and sometimes you don't speak to certain friends for like three months but they know the work was already done early on to show that you love and care about them. absolutely yeah so we're all it's, we're all in it together and i just think that we can really really I don't know what I'm going to do on the first gig, but I hope to do something special that we all just turn around and I kind of want us all to really sort of hug each other and put our arms around each other and just go, what? That sounds absolutely brilliant, Tyber. And, uh, you know, I, I hope and pray that, you know, obviously that is sooner rather than later. But um, yeah, I was I was, I was, was thinking about that, you know, obviously, you know, when the pubs first open, um, you know, obviously people are going to be flocking to the pubs and stuff. Then are people actually going to take, a, you know, maybe a different standpoint and look at that and think, hang on a minute. You know, we can't see this virus. They're saying to us it's all gone now and everything's fine. Obviously, you're going to have a load of people going, oh, pubs are open, let's get down there. Then it's going to be, I think, you know, a lot of people are going to think, oh, hang on a minute, how do we know that? Are we going to still keep the social distancing? I think, personally, uh, without trying to get on a platform here, I think we're going to try, I really do think we're going to start looking at this in a slightly different way, even when the bands and everything's lifted. So I hope yeah. that, you know, we go back to normal where everyone hugs each other and high fives and all of that and yeah. there's more sort of close contact again but you know part of me thinks yeah will there be a little bit of like your own style of social distancing where you're a little bit dubious about shaking by the hand and stuff as we're recording this it is thursday the 16th of april so i'll put a little time uh, date checking there um will you be out on your doorstep this evening at eight o'clock giving a nice big round of applause for all the uh nhs workers and of course frontline staff first one um i did boris as well um, Fantastic. So, yes, absolutely. Not that anyone's going to hear me around it. I think I've got one neighbour to my right, but apart from that, I'll probably do it for the birds and the rabbits. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's, it, and this is, you know, that's a fantastic, wonderful, wonderful thing to be able to go. Do you know, it's a favourite one minute of my life every single week. I know I do the radio every night, and yeah, yeah, um, I, I extend the radio once uh, once a week by one minute just to put my own round of applause in there. And obviously, sometimes we do Facebook yeah. Live as well. My daughter, my wife, yeah. my son comes out, and we all make a bit of noise. Sure. And we're literally about quarter of a mile from our local hospital so uh, if, if anyone's heard my son before they'll probably hear him um, <laughs> so you know it's a great thing to do and I think we need yeah. to do a little bit more of this you know whether we have um, you know any sort of virus or any sort of like a lockdown I think we yeah. need to start appreciating our uh, NHS staff the people that do the work the people that go out there and we don't do that unless obviously a catastrophe like this so it is nice I love it yeah and also as well as the people that work for the NHS all different races colours creeds so if you're going to appreciate that, do you know what I mean? That's the wonderful thing about it. It's not, you know, and there's people that are working class, middle class, and all the upper class work for the NHS. So Absolutely, yeah. I'm going to do yeah. class, and I'm going to skin, but I'm going to religion, people on the front line for us, humanity. <laughs> They're there to look after us, keep us safe, and keep us well, you know, and stop us from, uh, you know, unfortunately from dying as well. And a lot of people have, you know, lost their lives, but they have done such a brilliant job. And it just takes from, you know, what you say about our Prime Minister, you know. I think it's going to become a national thing every single year. We're going to have a national NHS day that's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. What would you all be having? Totally agree. And one last question, you know, whilst we're talking about any NHS, uh, it has been said that, you know, should they, after all of this is done and dusted, and obviously it's in our rearview mirror down the road, do you think the NHS staff should A, get a medal, B, get a huge pay rise, or C, both? Uh, You'd have to say both, wouldn't you? I think so too, yeah. You'd have to say both. You'd have to go, you you know, you you get war heroes that get medals when they go to war, and what they're doing, they're fighting for us. Yes. That's how you look at war, if you like, the soldiers. Well, the same for the NHS. They're fighting for us, right? Give them a medal. The thing as well is that for ages, really, we know they haven't been paid as well as they should have been being paid, so now's the time for us to reflect and go, blimey, thank you so, so much. Now let's 
raise that that raise the, their, their wages because you know i don't think anyone's going to dispute they don't deserve it there we go so we spoke about music spoke about how you got into music and we finished on a high <laughs> obviously talking about our brilliant nhs there ty but you are a star my friend and no, i can't wait to see so all i'm hoping wayfest goes ahead because it's up the road from where we live as well and yes. uh I'd, I'd love to come and see you and uh obviously you know whether it's a virtual high five or not i don't know how that works at the moment <laughs> there we go elbows uh, yeah, the high five elbows. How's that sound? <laughs> yeah, no, sounds good. Sounds but let's keep that hopeful. And uh, 21st of August uh, for Wayfest, and then obviously looking for your first arena tour. Of oh, come on! It's gonna, it's gonna happen, isn't it? It's gotta happen. From Buskin Street to 28th November Wembley Arena, you can't really uh, write something like that. So that let's just hope it does. Happen. That is absolutely brilliant. And uh, right, just to get hold of you, it's thejewelers.com on uh, on the internet, and obviously we can find you. Yep. On um, Facebook as well, if we just look up Tiber Cranston, and um, there yep. we are. There you are. Look at the you I'm there. Also doing a Facebook Live next Friday, about two o'clock, I think. It's one or two o'clock. We haven't set the time yet. We're about to announce it, so this is the first place I've announced it. So if anyone wants to tune in and ask me any questions, I'm on for about an hour, just boosting a bit of morale and talking nonsense. Oh, that's fantastic. And I'll tell you what, that's what we need. We don't need all this political stuff. You know, we get that at five o'clock no, on the... Um... I don't know enough about it anyway. No, neither do I, to be fair. I try and watch it and try and nod my head and think, yeah, I know what I'm talking about, but no. We need some silliness, we need some fun, we need some music, and we need, you know, you know, we need positivity to get us through this, and um, looking forward to that. It'll be, it'll be next Friday, so a week tomorrow. Week tomorrow. It's between probably one and two, or two and three, or three and four. Announced on our Facebook page. I don't think we've got the exact time just yet, but I'm guessing it's going to be two till three, to be honest with you. Um, so, um, yeah, Facebook Live, it will be announced on our Perfect. Social, across all social media platforms, probably today or tomorrow. Excellent, but lovely. That Friday. will be, as we, as we t- record this, that will be a week on Friday, which is the 24th of April. Just, uh, just, wanted, just wanted to make sure we got the date. Perfect. Lovely. Uh, I'm looking forward to that. I'll um, put a little mental Great. note on me diary now to look out for you on yeah, social media. Yeah, I'm going to yeah. add you as my friend now as well. I need friends. <laughs> Tyber, thanks ever so much indeed, my friend. No and um, I'll get this out as soon as possible on the Target Radio uh, website. I'll make a nice little um, uh, podcast from this as well for you and obviously for you to share along with obviously everyone that you know and love and obviously all your fans as well. How about that? Fantastic. Brilliant. Thank you very much indeed. Tyber, no lovely. Worries. Thanks ever so much. You take care. Love to all. Stay safe. And yourself. You stay safe as well, my friend. Stay safe and yeah. see you soon. Take care. Take care. Bye, Bye now. Bye. 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 And there you are, Tiber. Wow, absolutely brilliant. Thank you very much indeed, sir, for your time today on our interview. Now, none of this would have been possible without the, uh, well, the magic of Mr. Andy Topwalker, who has worked tirelessly behind the scenes, uh, contacting all these great artists, bands, etc., working out when we can do these things, and uh, most importantly, giving me all the uh, tools that I need just to literally have a telephone conversation. That's all I do is... Is I talk, I don't do any of the hard work, all the questions, most of the questions anyway, were posed by Andy, and uh, thank you very much indeed, sir. So that is our podcast for this week, it is a bonus one, and it's absolutely brilliant, I thought, and uh, don't forget to, uh, well, if if you're listening to this in real time, and it's on a Thursday, make sure you go out on your doorstep at 8 o'clock this evening, nice big round of applause for all the frontline NHS staff, and of course, all the key workers as well, and we're talking about the vets, Uh, they don't get a mention hardly. Uh, the vets, okay, they're still open. They're there to care for our four-legged friends, two-legged friends with wings, etc. You know what I mean. And obviously all the delivery uh, drivers and, you know, basically keeping the, um, you know, uh, the UK going. Thank you very much indeed. Um, we'll be back every single night from 7 o'clock every night. Don't forget, we have special guests every single Tuesday from 7 through till 9. Uh, Mondays is our mod show. Wednesdays is our Motown song show don't forget on a thursday including in the in the show we have unsigned bands and artists and we go an extra minute to applaud our nhs staff and fridays is our new wave hour so lots to keep you entertained during the week of your isolations and uh, hopefully you choose target radio okay don't forget we are on itunes amongst other podcast um facilities so if you think we deserve it and honestly it's, it, it, we love 
doing it, but it's lots of hard work. Please leave us a five-star rating. That way, then, we can be found easier for other folk out there to uh, tune in and join in the fun as well. For now, then, it's me, it's Cookie. Thank you very much indeed for joining us this hour for our uh, podcast, and we'll see you next time here on Target Radio and Target Radio Podcast with me, the Pod Father. Thank you. Ta-da!